In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly frame walls in SketchUp. Um, this process makes framing walls really easy, really fast. As a matter of fact, I didn't individually draw all of these studs or even all of these top plates or anything. I just made this one bottom plate and this stud here and copied it across the whole thing. And it's perfectly 16 inch on center, just like you would frame a wall. You can make it 24 inch on center or whatever. Um, but yeah, I wanna show you how to do this quickly and efficiently. So the first thing I'm gonna do is delete this project and I'm going to call out all the tools that I'm using. That way, if you're a beginner, it should be pretty easy to follow along. So I'm gonna hit the space bar for the selector tool. And then I'm going to, from left to right, drag a box around the entire project and hit delete. Okay, now to um, build that exact setup we just had, the first thing we'll do is we'll make a slab. So we're going to use the rectangle tool, which you can get to just by hitting R on your keyboard. And you'll click once where you want to start the rectangle, start dragging it out. And before you do anything else, you can type your dimensions. I'm going to type 10 apostrophe comma 12 apostrophe and I'm using the apostrophe to abbreviate foot and then enter and those dimensions were right here if you didn't notice um, and now that I've already hit enter I think I can change it yeah I can still change it because I haven't done anything else so if I decided I wanted 10 apostrophe comma by 20 feet I could still change it because I haven't clicked on anything else. So we'll go back to 10, 12. Oh. And the apostrophe abbreviates foot on here. If you just type in 10 comma 12, you'll get 10 inches by 12 inches. So we're 10 by 12 feet and I want to raise it up six inches. So I'll, I'll hit P for the push pull tool, or you can find that right here. Then I'm gonna lift up, type the number six, hit enter. And again, before I click on anything or do anything else, if I wanted to make it 24 inches, I would just type 24, hit enter. We'll type six, enter, leave it right there. So now we have a six inch slab. And if I wanted to paint this to uh, look more like concrete so that all the sides were gray, the way that you can paint the entire project is triple click on the project, hit B, which is the paint tool. Select a color you want. I'm gonna select this gray and painted the whole project. So um, the reason I triple clicked it, just to mention, uh, I don't wanna give you guys too much information and confuse you, but um, every time I do something on here, I think of something I could share with you. So for one, if you click on a project before it's a component, if you click on it, it will just highlight the face if you double click on it, it will highlight the face and its edges. And if you triple click it, it will select the whole thing. So um, now that we have this triple clicked, we're going to right click or control click on a Mac and select make component. I'm gonna call this slab. So now we've made a component. And the reason we did that is if we wanted to change anything on this, uh, it's not going to be connected to our wood framing. So they're separate. We can triple click on this slab and it won't mess with the wood. And we can triple click on the wood. It won't mess with the slab. If we want to move this, we can move it. Um, that's the upside to making it component. And it's critical for this method of framing I'm about to show you. So now we've got a, a slab that's a component. And I'm going to just draw my bottom plate right here. And because this is a component, I can draw on it and everything I make on it will not be connected to it. It will still be its own component. So I'll just come up, type in 1.5 for one and a half inches, come over on the red axis, 3.5 inches, enter, come down to this line, back to here. So this is gonna be our bottom plate. These are the dimensions of a two by four. And I'm going to use the push pull tool to drag this across the slab. But before I do that, if I want it to look like wood, I can paint this side now, the side that I'm going to be pulling, and the whole board will come out 
that color. So if I go to B to the paint tool, I can select this wood pattern. And if you're just seeing colors here, all you have to do is click on the magnifying glass, which is browse. And you can go under, there's a uh, wood section here. Or when I'm framing, I like to use right here in synthetic surfaces. There's a wood pattern here. I think that looks pretty good. So I just painted this side of it. And I'm going to hit P for the push pull tool. And then I'll just drag it out a little bit. And I'll let off and I'll type in 12 apostrophe enter so that should make that piece 12 feet long so our slab is 12 feet long so our bottom plate is 12 feet long so now what I'm going to do is triple click the bottom plate and make it a component now notice because the slab is a component we can click this board as many times as we want and it does not do anything to the slab so that's a good thing so triple click your uh, bottom plate right click or control click go to make component we'll call it bottom plate or actually I'm gonna call it bottom slash top plate because we're going to reuse this for our top plates too since it's the exact same board okay so now our bottom plate is a component we're going to draw our first stud here so we'll come out 1.5 enter go across to this corner to this corner so just like last time, if we paint this ahead of time, before we pull it out, it will make sure the whole board is painted. So we'll use, we'll just go back into here. Now we've done that. We'll hit P for the push pull tool. I'm going to pull this up. We'll just go with, uh, I don't know, 82 inches. So that is six feet, 10 inches. So there's our first stud. Now, what we want to do is make this a component so that we can copy it across here. And this part is um, really easy and really fast. You don't have to actually even drag this individually across here. So I'll show you. First, let's triple click our stud. Right click, make component. We'll call it stud. And then um, I'm going to frame this wall 16 inches on center. So. Um, you may or may not know this, but if you are framing 16 inches on center, your first board is actually going to be three quarter inches less than 16 inches on center. And I'll show why that is in just a second. So I'm gonna hit M, which is the move tool. And if you look at the red arrows on my cursor here, this is the move tool. If I hit Alt or Option, it adds this little plus sign. So that allows me to move a copy and leave the original original stud in place. So I'll set it right here and I'm gonna move it over and type in 15.25. Like I mentioned, the first stud is not 16 inches over and I'll show why that is in just a second. But just to continue adding the studs here, um, I'll keep going and then I'll show you what I meant by that. So um, this one I'm going to move 16 inches now. And this is where it gets easy. So I'll hit option again to copy. I'll move it 16 inches, hit enter, and then I'll just hit X eight. So what that did was it made eight total copies. So um, this one is actually, it ends on the 12 foot on center since it is 16 inches on center. So we'll just adjust this by moving it back to the edge here, three quarters. And just before I go any further, I feel like I have to explain the uh, first stud here. So when you're framing 16 inches on center, you're, uh, you're doing that so that four foot and eight foot sheet goods will align with the centers of the boards. But your first board, you're not, you're not putting a sheet good at the center of it. You're putting it at the end. So if I were to measure from the edge of this board here and go 16, it puts us dead on center. And then from there, if I were to go 16, it puts us dead on center. So the reason this one's 15 and a quarter is because we're measuring from the end here. And um, all of these are centered all the way down the line. And then the last sheet would end right on the end here. So anyway, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. But anyway, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this bottom plate and move it up here to the top. And since I made the studs 82 inches, 
Um, we need to move it 83 and a half and it will just uh, land right on top there. So I'll select the bottom plate. I'll hit M for move tool, hit option to copy. And I'm going to move a copy. I'll just move it up a little bit and then I'll type in 83.5. And what that did was it dropped it right on top there. And then if I wanted to move it again, I'm going to hit option because again, I'm making a copy and now we have a double top plate. So if you wanted to just copy this wall across, you could select the whole thing. And notice I got the slab in here. So if I hold down shift, click on the slab, it removed the slab from there. And because this is 10 feet wide, which is 120 inches, we need to move it. We want this end here, not on the end or it would be hanging over. We want it three and a half inches in. So 120 minus three and a half is 116.5. So I'm going to move a copy of this whole wall. Again, M for move the move tool and then option for the copy. We're going to move this over 116.5 enter. And there we have it. So that's the basics of framing walls and SketchUp. Um, I'm going to do some more thorough tutorials on framing and building houses, cabins, sheds, and the sort of things I like to design in SketchUp. But I thought I would just make a basics tutorial on framing. And I don't know if I went too fast through this one. Um, I kind of just set out to make a shorter video this time. But uh, just let me know what you think in the comments because um, I'm, this YouTube channel is brand new and I just, um, really want to help people learn SketchUp. So if I could get your feedback, that would help me understand how I could better help you guys. So anyway, that's the basics of framing. Um, if you want to check out other videos, I'll be doing some on actual framing whole projects here soon. But anyway, thank you for watching so much and I'll see you in another video.